we got the standardization of the sodium hydroxide solution. Um, so what does that mean here? Does somebody know what it means? Yeah, standardized means there's a number. So uh, what is the, the number that we're after here? 0 0.1182. 0 0.1182 is the. Is that what you got in the calculation? No. Okay, we haven't done this calculation yet. What is the standardization of sodium hydroxide? What does that mean? Standardization means that we're going to determine its composition you know, to as high of a degree of accuracy and precision as we can. And so this would be just the accurate and precise determination of the composition. Now, this is a sodium hydroxide solution, so the composition is going to be given by the molarity. The molarity is really a convenient method of expressing composition of solution. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide are contained in a liter of this solution. And we want to determine that as accurately and precisely as possible. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to use dimensional analysis to figure this out. Now, the dimensional analysis we can do um, based on the different trials. So, for example, trial one. You're going to just pick your three best trials, and then you're going to omit all the other trials. So um, <coughs> picking the three best trials Um, or if you have more than three, it's, it's okay as well. And so what do we have from trial one? Well, we're using the HCL standard. An HCL standard solution, somebody's already standardized that, and so they already have an accurate and precise concentration for this. And this is the number. What was the number, Maya? Um, okay, so the HCL standard solution had a concentration of 0 0.11. Did everybody write this down? Yes. 1182 capital M HCL. And so that means what we what we know is is this. Um, it was pretty accurately determined that there were 0 0.1182 moles of HCL for every liter of this HCL solution. So this would be pure HCL, moles of pure HCL in a liter of this. And so we know that the reaction goes like this. One mole of HCl reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide to produce salt and water. This is a double replacement reaction or um, an acid base type reaction. And so if we can do this, this is going to be the way we're going to do the stoichiometry for solutions. For solutions, if we have the volume of HCl solution. And so if we know how the volume of HCl solution, we can go straight to moles of HCl solution. And so when we have molarity like this, you know, uh, when we use it in stoichiometry, molarity can go take us from moles to liters of solution, or we can go from liters of solution to moles of pure. And so in this case, if we know how many liters of HCl solution we use, then we can figure out how many moles of pure HCl 
were used. And then from moles of HCl, we can go to moles of sodium hydroxide. And then from moles of sodium hydroxide, we can go to molarity of sodium hydroxide. Now, the way we're going to go to molarity of sodium hydroxide is we just take the moles and the, divide it by the volume of sodium hydroxide solution used. And so basically, we're going to go here. And so what we want to do is we're going to calculate using stoichiometry the moles of sodium hydroxide and then plug that in here. Um, but it, we didn't use a full liter, and so we'll have to divide it by how, uh, however many liters we use. And so this is it here. And so let's take a look at trial one. For this. So does somebody have some data? So you can take a look at the calculation. How many milliliters did uh, you use of the HCl? Okay. Um, actually, the volume, the not the initial, not the final, but the difference, the total milliliters used. Twenty-one point ten. Milliliters of HCl? Yeah. Okay, how many milliliters of sodium hydroxide? Uh, 21.61. Okay, this is uh, the solution. And so to figure out the molarity of the sodium hydroxide, the molarity of the sodium hydroxide is going to equal the moles of sodium hydroxide. The moles of sodium hydroxide we get from stoichiometry. divided by the liters of sodium hydroxide. The liters of sodium hydroxide, this is going to come from the titration. And so um, we'll have the moles of sodium hydroxide, which we're going to calculate, divided by the liters. And so what we need to do is we need to convert this into liters. If we convert it into liters, I'm just going to move the decimal three over. And so it comes out to 0 0.02161 liters of sodium hydroxide solution. So I'll just get 0 0.02161 liters of sodium hydroxide. Or I'll do a dimensional analysis. So I'll just convert milliliters to liters in dimensional analysis on the bottom. OK, so now all I have to do is calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide. Well, the moles of sodium hydroxide is just two steps here. We go from the volume of the HCl solution to the moles of HCl, moles of HCl to moles of sodium hydroxide using the molarity. The molarity can take us to, from volume of solution to moles or can take us from moles to volume of solution. And so from the HCl here, well, I'll just do this using dimensional analysis so I don't make any mistakes. 21.10 milliliters of HCl solution. OK, and then we're going to use uh, the uh, milliliter to liter conversion, 1,000 milliliters per liter. That takes us to liters of HCl. Should I skip that doing this here? And then I'm going to go from liters of HCl to moles. And so it's going to be 0 0.1182 moles of HCl per liter of solution. So we have this mixture. We're going to go from the mixture straight to moles of pure HCl. So this is why molarity is a very popular way of expressing composition of mixtures, because it, it makes the stoichiometry a bit easier. And so once we get to moles of HCl, then we'll just do a one-to-one. Um, -one. It's one mole of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of HCl. Here. This takes us to pure uh, uh, moles of pure sodium hydroxide. And so let's uh, do this. So 
divided by a thousand times point one one eight two equals. And so I get zero point zero zero two four nine four zero two moles of NaOH. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in here and divide it by the volume of H of not the volume of sodium hydroxide solution. So I take the moles, plug it into that equation by dividing it by the volume of sodium hydroxide solution used. You get the molarity. And so I'll just take this number divided by 0 0.02161 liters of sodium hydroxide solution <coughs> used, and I get a molarity of 0 0.11541. And moles per liter is ca capital M, so this is a molarity sodium hydroxide. And so that's for trial one. And then I'll repeat it for the next trial and the next trial. So I have three good trials. Don't do this calculation for the bad trials. It's not. We're just going to throw the bad trials out. And then we're going to average those three trials. Take the average of the three trials. It'll take you know um, the sum itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this for the other two good trials and then take the average molarity. And so what we want to do is we want to get the average molarity for the three trials, good trials. So we repeat for the um, two you know, other good trials and then average the three, and then average the three trials. And so what we're going to get is we're going to get the average molarity for the sodium hydroxide. And that's what we want here. And so this is now going to be called a standard, sodium hydroxide standard, because what we've done is we've determined its uh, concentration with accuracy and precision. And so this is now going to be called the sodium hydroxide standard. And so this process is standardization. Standardization just means the determination of the composition with some accuracy and precision. So that's part one. So now uh, we're going to use that sodium hydroxide solution now that it's been standardized, we're going to use it to figure out an unknown acetic acid concentration. Uh, that's part two or day two. So in day two, let's take a look at what we're doing here. Acetic acid is this is common for like vinegar analysis. You know, sometimes you want to know what the concentration of the vinegar is. So in part two, uh, we're going to titrate an unknown acetic acid. You know, the unknown is, is acetic acid in water, but what's unknown is the composition. You know, how much acetic acid, how much water. Now, uh, in part one, we just standardize the base. Now we know what its concentration is. So, you know, four sig figs. And so what we can do is we can use that standard base to determine what the concentration of the acetic acid is to four sig figs. So what we're going to, first off, uh, we're going to obtain approximately 100 milliliters of acetic acid solution of unknown molarity from the stockroom in a clean, dry 250 milliliter beaker. Bring your 250 milliliter beaker over there. Use the unknown acetic acid solution to prepare the acid burette as in the previous. So we use the same standard procedure. Rinse it with water and then rinse it with acetic acid. 
get rid of the air pockets or any air bubbles. And then we're going to put the acetic acid into a um, Erlmeyer flask, add two drops of phenolphthalein, and then titrate it against the against the uh, sodium hydroxide. And we need to. Um, I, I'm going to modify this a little bit because we need uh, we need the same kind of precision. We need a 0.5 percent precision for this one. And so the calculation, we're going to determine the percent because usually um, acetic acid or vinegars or, are um, expressed, the composition of those are expressed in percent by mass. We're going to do this calculation later. What we're going to do is quick, rough calculation to make sure that we're getting good precision. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're either going to take the the um, the acid to base ratio or the base to acid ratio. And so we're just going to take this ratio and we're going to calculate this ratio for the three trials. And the ratio, the calculated ratio has to agree within 0.5%. And so we need three trials that agree within 0.5%. So if the percent difference is greater than 0.5%, then um, we have to do a fourth trial, fifth trial, however many trials it takes. Now, uh, what was the calculation for that? Well, it's taking the biggest ratio minus the smallest ratio dividing by the smallest ratio times 100%. And so the same kind of procedure. So are there any questions on uh, today's lab? Uh huh. Those two initial numbers, the 21.10 and 21.16, uh, were those the biggest? Um, no, we, we don't. OK. Uh, what were the numbers here, 21.60? What we do is we do this calculation. You know, either I can make it bigger than one or smaller than one. But you have to do the same calculation for each trial. And so what I do is I, I first calculate the ratio, 21.61 divided by 21.1. And the ratio is 1.024, 1.0241. This is trial one. OK, give me your trial two. Karen, do you have some data for trial two? Yeah. Um, for the volume of acid, 20.13. 20.13, OK. And for the base, 20.01. Uh, 20.01. Are those the two final volumes? The final volumes, the two final volumes. And so I would do um, this. I do 20.13 divided by 20.01. These are the final volumes, 1.0. Zero five nine. Okay, now let's see if these agree within um, 0.5. What is the percent difference between these? The percent difference, well, we need three trials, but let's go ahead and do it off these. We pick the two um, furthest away. If I have three trials, actually, let's go with three trials here. Do it correctly. What was their third trial? Uh, for the acid, 21.84. 21.84. Twenty one point forty one. And so what I do here is I go twenty one point eighty four divided by twenty one point forty one. So I calculate the same ratio for each. And in fact this is acid over base here. And so this will be one point zero two zero zero. Then I look at the, the, the biggest difference. The biggest difference is going to be these two here. And so this is what I would call the biggest. The biggest is going to be um, actually 1.02. The biggest difference would be these two here. And so the biggest ratio is 1.0241. The smallest ratio is 1.0059. Divided by the smallest ratio, 
times 100 percent. And so I'll just do it like this. 1.0241 minus 1.0059 equals divided by 1.0059 times 100. And the percent difference I get is 1.80%. 1.80%, what is our limit? 0 0.5. This is greater than 0.5%. And so what's required here is um, we've got to do a trial four. We do a trial four, and then we pick the three that are closest. Um, so for example, we might... Uh, do a trial four and eliminate trial one, or we might do a trial four and eliminate one of the other trials. So we do a trial four, and then, because this exceeds the 0.5 percent, and so if yours exceeds that, then what you have to do is you have to continue with part one today until you get three good trials, and then start part two. There should be enough time. In fact, there should be enough time to do both trials. I mean, both uh, parts in one day, um, if your precision's good. It, the, the thing you got to worry about is um, there are some people that were doing like trial, I had one student doing trial seven, trial eight, could not get it, get uh, decent precision, and then finally uh, realized they had an air pocket in there. And the air pocket, you know, air pockets fluctuate in terms of the volume. So the air pocket, uh, air is compressible. And so they, they weren't able to um, do it. But you know, what, what we're doing is uh, we want to get practice. If you have time, do more trials. Because in Chem 4, Chem 4 is very forgiving for tritrations. In Chem 1A, because we have a dual burette system. With dual, dual burette system, if you overshoot it, no big deal. You can back titrate it. You go back and forth, back and forth. You know, in Chem 1A you have a single burette, so if you overshoot it, that run is trash, basically, and you just re restart from the beginning. And so what happens in Chem 1A is is this: in Chem 1A, you only have one chance to get it, the endpoint. That's it, and so it's a lot less forgiving. So you, what you want to do is you want to get practice now, as much practice as you can with titration, uh, and that'll help you for future. Titration is important technique, a lot of technique that everyone should know. So this is not good enough. We need trial four, trial five, trial six, however many trials it takes. You know, now's the time to get your practice. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it unless you're you know, one thing that commonly happens is you run out. You run out of sodium hydroxide, you run out of HCl. It just gets more from the stock room, or somebody has some extra to use theirs. But, you know, don't think, oh, I want to get out of here early. That's close enough. 1.8%? No, it's not close enough. You've got to be better than that, you know. You want to just do another trial, and how to get better than that is just do a little bit of extra practice. You don't have it. Okay. All right, any other questions? This. All right, the same kind of safety hazard. Acetic acid, you know, at low concentration like this is like vinegar. So people, um, it's generally regarded as safe, vinegar. And so people, you know, you could splash vinegar in your eyes. It's probably not going to kill you. Or drink it. It's not going to kill you. People drink it all the time. But, um, but sodium hydroxide, you don't want to splash in your eyes again. And you don't want to drink this stuff. You know, it's drain cleaner. It's bad for you. So the main hazard in this experiment is sodium hydroxide. The goggles are required again. Any questions? So when we find our uh, three polarities, we just divide by three. And then yeah, you, you don't have to do the calculation now. The calculation will come, come later. I just wanted to talk about the standardization procedure. You know, what was day one? What was the purpose of day one? Standardization. Tell me what a standardization is. Can you? You know, I mentioned it last week, but do you, do, you, do you remember what standardization is? Yeah, determining the, con um, the composition. Um, so that's what standardization is. 
against a, a known standard. We have different, we have primary standards and secondary standards, and you buy standards, you can buy standards from the chem suppliers. All right, I had some questions about experiments three and experiment six. Experiments three and six, I'm not gonna collect at this time because we need to do this. You guys need to do exercise C for experiments three and six. Exercise C is a selected equations from experiments three and six. And so you have to write the CE, they call it the full ionic equation, or it's full, actually, full formula equation, FFE. I call it the CE. The total ionic equation I call the IE, and the net ionic equation is the same, NIE. And so you have to write the equations out for some select reactions here. So I want you to do that for experiments three and six. I'll give you extra time for this. Yeah, this is exercise C in the back of your lab manual. So work on, start working on those. Time. Most of these are double replacement. Then there's some single replacement. These single replacements all work. There are no exceptions there. And then there's a, a, some that I didn't talk about. For example, E1 I haven't talked about, but take a look at E1 and see if you can figure it out. Okay.